I'm President of the Board, Julie Hummer, and you're watching AACPS TV. I am Gaston Gomez, coming up next on Global Perspectives, a heart to heart conversation about culture and education. Welcome to Global Perspectives, a heart to heart conversation about culture and education. I am your host, Gaston Gomez, ELL Family and Community Outreach Program Manager. I have Valerie Perez from uh, Puerto Rico. Welcome. Thank you, Gaston, for having me. So tell me about you. I am intrigued about your culture and education in Puerto Rico. So tell me about your uh, hometown. Yes, I come from, uh, my hometown is Gurabo uh, in Puerto Rico, as you said. It's located in the eastern central uh, region of the island, um, known as the town of the stairways or El Pueblo de las Escaleras in Spanish, because wow. of all the stairways in, in the urban area of the town. Wonderful. So the weather pretty much is always uh, tropical always, year round. Always very warm. Right. <laughs> yes. So tell me something about, uh, you told me about the stair, uh, stairway, uh, but tell me more about your hometown. My hometown? Well, it's a, it's a small hometown. Pretty much in, in, Puerto, in Puerto Rico, um, it's the same food all over Puerto Rico. Um, we eat a lot of plantains, green plantains. We make something called uh, mofongo with the green plantains, which is just fried mashed uh, plantains. Uh, we eat a lot of fish, meat, uh, pork. We eat a lot of pork <laughs> and fried stuff, all the good stuff. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And I think rice and beans as well. Rice, beans, yes, of course. Pretty much on the daily uh, mm -hmm. basis, right? It's yes. part of the uh, daily It's part diet. of our diet even in schools. Uh, the school cafeteria, there's always rice, beans, uh, meat, fish, yes. Oh, great. So uh, growing up, you, did you go to private schools or public schools? Both. Both. I went to uh, private school for uh, elementary and middle school, and then uh, high school, I went to a public school. Great. So did boy and girls go together? Yes. Uh, some private schools have uh, only girls or only boys, but it's mostly, uh, yeah, everyone together. Great. So tell me something fun that you did when you were a child in your school. Something fun. Yeah, oh, something I that was... you did that it was like, okay, I will never forget this moment. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I cannot remember anything. I was a, <laughs> a boring student, like a straight A student. <laughs> no, not boring, that, but, 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 but um, no, I was just a, a good student. I always participated in a lot of uh, school activities. Something very memorable uh, that I would never forget was in high school, I I was president of my senior class. See, that's so good to I, <laughs> Yes, I was always busy in high school um, organizing school events. We actually, uh, we did a lot of fundraisers and, and activities, and we got enough money, like $60,000, to do a nice senior prom wow. and a ring dance that we call the, the ceremony where, it's a ring right, ceremony, right, right. we call it a ring dance. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so when you were part of the uh, uh, school, you know, as a student, were your parents expected to participate in your school activities? Was that an expectation? Yes. yes. Pa parent uh, participation or involvement in Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico is is expected. Um, not not always the case. It doesn't always happen. Right. But um, my parents were very involved in in my education. It's a little different from from the United States, or at least what I know uh, here in Anne Arundel County, um, there's uh, not, not a lot of parent-teacher conferences and not a lot of times to meet with the, with the parents in, in Puerto Rico. It's more like the parents have to ask to speak to the teachers. And, uh, but yes, uh, participation is expected. And it's actually the responsibility of the school principal to encourage and create programs so that parents can be more involved in the children's education. Wonderful. So do you learn English growing up as a child or do you learn English in middle school, high school? I, in Puerto Rico, you have to, the, it's part of the curriculum uh, the, to take the English class um, from first grade all the way to high school. So uh, that's how I learned it. I had really good English teachers um, and yes, and then in college as well. So. 
Not everybody in Puerto Rico speaks English, right? No. Right. So why is it, why is it different? Like you speak English um, very well. I guess I was really interested in speaking English, in learning. So you, um, yes. You had so an I, besides, yes, besides um, getting it from the school, at home I would also do my homework. Like I would um, wa try to watch some TV shows from the United States, um, and every time I I didn't understand uh, like a concept or something, I would look it up. I would just get an encyclopedia because <laughs> back then there wasn't like Google or all that, all that, that other right. stuff online. Um, so just a dictionary and, and I, I would practice and that's how I learned. So it was your personal motivation. Yes, and, um, I was very mo motivated to right. learn English. All, exactly, so to learn something deeper, not just superficially, but deeper. Like I yes, wanted to I, learn more I about this. I wanted to have conversations because I knew a lot of the, the concepts and the, um, the, uh, the writing conventions, things like that, but I, I, didn't, I couldn't really have like a conversation with someone. Um, so that's the part that I really studied on my own. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, this is great to know. So, why did you move to the United States? Well, I, uh, my husband and I, we we got married in 2008, and uh, we just we wanted a, a different scenario. We wanted to do something different. So, six months after getting married, he got a job offer here in Maryland, and that's how we ended up here. And I know a lot of our. Uh, viewers may not know that Puerto Rico is part of one of the U.S. lands, and yes. so tell me about that. So I know it was a cultural shock for you uh, when you came to the U.S. Yes. and trying to look for jobs. So tell me about that. Funny. I would like everybody to know about your Yes, funny, funny stories. Like I, We are a U.S. territory, um, and it's not a lot of people that live in the States know that, that we are um, U.S. citizens by birth. Um, so when I first came here, it was funny because I would go to job interviews and the first thing they would ask me was, do you, are, do you have documents? Are you here legally? Can, can you work? Right. Like, do you have a work permit or something? <laughs> and I had to educate them and be like, no, I'm a U.S. citizen, this and that, and give them a little uh, part of the U.S. history, <laughs> <laughs> like teach them a little right. of U.S. history. So yeah, that's why that I, is I, funny. I it still happens. Yeah, well, I mean, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of our viewers will not, may not know that, so it's good to, mm -hmm. for them to have that um, experience in knowing from you or hearing from you. So when did you move here? Or what year did you in arrive? 2008. 2008. I've been here nine years nine now, years. this year. Yeah. And, and so I know you personally, and mm -hmm. I know your beautiful son, no. and I know he yeah. is a, a wonderful kid, very smart, mm -hmm. and I know, if you don't mind sharing about, you know, utilizing the... Uh, special education programs that we have in and around the county public schools that I would like for you to give yes. me some insights so our viewers can know more about mm -hmm, our beautiful programs. Oh yes, I love talking about the programs in and around the county public schools for uh, infants and toddlers or, or children in special education or in, in my son's case with an autism spectrum disorder. Uh, I think early intervention is very important and the fact that the schools here in Ann Arundel care about that and, and, and have programs for families that are completely free, um, that, it's amazing. So I, I have a lot to thank um, the, the school system because my son at 18 months, he was showing some signs of autism and the, the pediatrician immediately said, you have to call Ann Arundel County Public Schools, the Infants and Toddlers Program. I did. Which is also known as ITP. ITP, yes. And I did, and immediately they evaluated him, and they started going to our house and, and doing therapy there. Then it got a little more intensive. Uh, he started receiving another therapy, which is known as ABA, or Applied Behavioral Analysis um, Therapy. And uh, it, it's just amazing to see the changes in him. He's still receiving special education services, but he was a nonverbal child and around three years old or, or almost four years old he started uh, saying some some words and now he he can have conversations with you um, it's it's amazing so I I'm a firm firm believer in early education and I am I think this is the right place to be for that uh, I'm so grateful that I'm in this county and and of all the services that 
families can get through the Birth to Buy programs. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I know it's very personal and intimate, so I appreciate you oh, sharing yes. that with um, our. And any families that ever, I, I, I have um, the opportunity to work with, with families in the school system, and every time I encounter a family that is going through the same thing, I talk about my experience because I, I truly believe everything um, the, the school system is doing for these students. So, Great. so why Anna and the Connie when you guys move here, you and your husband move here in 2008? Um, he, he, it was actually my husband got a job in Maryland in Hanover. Um, pretty much the same thing he used to do in Puerto Rico. He's an engineer, so he he got this the exact same job offer um, in uh, here in Hanover, Maryland. And we just went around, and I we thought Anne Arundel, especially Glen Burnie, but this is where we live, um, was a. a like that had that feeling of a small town just like I, I was used to in Puerto Rico so we we liked it and we decided to to move here great so what had you heard about the US before moving here I was uh, I was I mean I, I knew a lot about the United States um, coming from Puerto Rico I had the opportunity to visit vacation here before in other states uh, never been to Maryland before but Yes, it's in Puerto Rico. Some people that, that go there for the first time, they are amazed because you can see almost every single store that they have here in the U.S. or restaurants. They're in Puerto Rico as well. So there's a lot of similarities, that a lot of different um, things culturally speaking. But we we are pretty familiar with the with the U.S. and. And not a lot of people had the experience or have had the experience of visiting the United no, States. No, no, but all. we so get a experience. lot of things from like TV shows, um, things like that. We, <laughs> yeah. Before I came here um, to visit, I I had actually learned some things from watching TV shows or news or. What was your favorite TV show? Friends. Friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That I used to watch. I learned a lot of English from Friends, from watching Friends. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> Great. And so, what was your cultural shock when you moved here and you became a uh, county resident? So, what was your first, first cultural shock that you were oh so amazed God. about it or wow? Well, uh, I guess the, the one I shared about not a lot, a lot a lot of people knowing about the relationship with Puerto Rico between Puerto Rico and the United States, but also the Christmas. Oh my gosh, Christmas time! It, that was a shock to me because in Puerto Rico, Christmas lasts for like a month, <laughs> and here it's only like a week. <laughs> School's <laughs> closed for a week, but in Puerto right. Rico, it's closed like almost Pretty much the whole month of almost, December. No, well, yes, like two weeks and then on and off. But we celebrate in Puerto Rico the Epiphany or the uh, Three Kings Day, which happens on January sixth. Um, so, and that's a very important holiday to us. It's almost like like Christmas Day. So um, it's hard not to be able to celebrate that here. <laughs> right. That's a shock to me still. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Do you celebrate the, it? Do you still do we it still, in your we, we, we still have the tradition at home. Um, it's, it's, we do the things that we would usually do back in Puerto Rico on that day. Because I want to you know, show, show that to my son and, and show that part of the culture to him. And so our viewers may not know about Three Kings, right? <laughs> Celebrating the Dia de los Reyes or Three Kings. And there's a special cake that we have. But that is in, I, in some part, so in, in Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, we don't ah. do that. We just, um, we get some grass in a shoe box at night and we put it under our beds or uh, under the tree. Interesting. <laughs> because that's what the camels eat. Like cookies for Santa, then the camels eat grass. Oh, so wow. that's, that's, that's part of our tradition, but we don't do the cake. I've heard that in Mexico, right? They, they do it in right. other parts, like Spain, I think, mm -hmm. does that too, but not in Puerto Rico. <laughs> right. Well, that's interesting to but, know. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, any other experiences that you had when you moved here in a way that you were aha, like an aha moment or you know, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are many, but yes, you might have to think of that. I can harder. think of. Oh, um, I don't know. It's just, well, with the school system, actually, I've seen um, it, there's many differences. Like getting to work for the school system, I, I 
compare it now to when I, when I was going to school in Puerto Rico, and there are many differences, like the school lunch, the, the cafeteria lunch is very different. Like in Puerto Rico, you would get like a big meal with rice, beans, meat, a dessert, a milk. Uh, it, 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 was, it was a huge, a huge um, uh, meal. Uh, and, and here it's more like, uh, I don't know, pizza, things like that, you wouldn't get in Puerto Rico. You, you had to get your rice and beans. Like regional meals, pretty yes, much. Yes, yes. Um, and, um, and the fact that during uh, here, the, it's very structured. The, the school day for students is very structured. Like, um, for instance, the, the, the um, hour for lunch and recess, they go in a line to, to recess with the teachers, and then they come back in, in a line. It's very organized. In Puerto Rico, once uh, it was lunchtime, and the teachers were like, OK, bye-bye, see ya. <laughs> the, the students would go have lunch or go play outside. It wasn't very organized. <laughs> so uh, that was a little shocking for me. So tell me about uh, school. Did you go for like six, seven, or eight hours a day, or? What, what, what was the structure like? Um, for the school? It's it was pretty much every school. I don't. I think it's the same thing now. But it was eight to three. Okay. Um, and that was every every school. Um, the element the the grade levels here are are different. Like elementary goes from pre K or kinder to all the way to fifth grade in Puerto Rico is up to sixth, sixth grade mm -hmm. that's and then middle school starts at seventh grade uh, through ninth grade and then high school tenth to through uh, twelve, through, through 12 mm -hmm. yeah so that was that that's was why good. lunch is provided in our in, in, in the schools in Puerto Rico and lunch is provided um, free for everyone for in Puerto Rico See, yes. that's a difference that we don't have in other countries uh, in Latin America or in Europe or Middle East that they don't provide lunch mm. um, in some schools. So okay. that's why I, I enjoy learning from, yes. from you Puerto and some others that I have interviewed. It's, mm -hmm. it's free for everyone in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Great. So I know you mentioned that you work for the school system and we are okay. honored to have mm -hmm. you as part of our team. Uh, what do you do? I am a bilingual family and community outreach facilitator. Um, and what I basically do is I create relationships between uh, or improve and uh, provide communication between the school and the, the Spanish speaking families in our county. Um, and we also uh, de develop programs and trainings for parents um, just because we get a lot of families from El Salvador and, and Central America and the school system is very different. So my job is to um, educate them about our educational system and also provide them the tools so they can become more involved in their children's education. Right. As you may know, a lot of our parents don't have the experience of participating mm -hmm. or being involved because that was not part of their culture. Yes. So here, and, and many, in many uh, countries, the the parents' input is not expected, or or like they really don't have a lot of opportunities to to become involved in, in the school. And, and here, that is, is the complete opposite. It's, it's expected that they participate in, and they want to hear from the parents. Right. So, and some of our parents are not literate, or they have some literacy background, or maybe little education. So what do we do in our schools? So tell me what you do in your schools when <laughs> it comes to promoting early literacy or literacy with our parents. Um, one thing um, that, that we love doing is reading programs. Reading is very important to, and to our and county. the show is called, I mean, not the show, I'm sorry. The, the program, program is called? Leamos Juntos. Let's uh, Read, let's together. read together. It's a great way to um, teach parents how to, how to um, because sometimes they feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not an expert and I'm not an educator, so I'm, I cannot help my child right, learn right. to read. And that's not true. There are many ways or many things you can do at home with the children's. Uh, with the children to um, teach them uh, to read um, and and do it as a family and we teach them strategies during during that program let's read together uh, we teach them strategies that they can use at home very easy strategies right. and fun for the family um, because we think that reading is such an important 
part of, of our education. Correct. And some of our international parents, they never had that experience. Mm -hmm. Not even as a child to have but fun. But it's awesome to see their faces when, when you're doing the program and they're like, oh, yeah, I can do that at home with them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the program, we usually give them time to practice and, and have some uh, fun reading with their children. And that is such a joy to... Uh, to see them and you know um, yes. working. Yes, they keep and ending. They, at the end, they always keep asking for more. For so, more and more. Yeah. That's great. That's <laughs> yeah. our goal, right? That's to educate them and, and mm -hmm. improve our educational yes. system, yeah. even with our international parents. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we also have some behavioral uh, trainings or um, workshops as well. Yes. We bilingual facilitators. We love to work with other professionals in the school building. Uh, like the social workers. I had an, uh, an opportunity to do some workshop, workshops for parents uh, recently with our, social, our school social worker. And we talked about different strategies on how to handle behaviors at home. And so parents were very grateful and, and they told us that it was great information that they got from those um, sessions that we had. Great. Any other programs that you have uh, presented to our international parents? Um, last year, at the mid I have one of the middle schools in the county, and I, I had the opportunity with the counselor to do um, like three parenting strategy sessions. And it was awesome because we, we started very basic, talking about all the programs for our middle schoolers, and then what's going to happen when they move on to high school, which is uh, uh, parents don't really know all the opportunities that are available right. to their children. Um, and then we moved on to behaviors, to social, emotional health, um, which can be really challenging at that age. So uh, th that, that was a really nice program we did last year. And we're hoping to, to do it sometime this year as well. What is the name of the program that you were telling me about? We, we just call it um, Parenting Strategies. But also One, Two, Three Magic? I think it's one oh, of them one, as well. Oh, one two three magic is another one. It's another one. That, right? I know we have so many one, wonderful. We programs, have a so. lot of nice ELL mm -hmm. programs, like for English uh, learners. And the greatness of these programs are available through the county, not just in yes. some pockets yes. of the county, but they are available for mm -hmm. anyone to utilize them in yes, any school. Yes, anyone much. can use them. Social workers, uh, school counselors, and all the bilingual facilitators. I, I know that we love to help. That is in our nature. So any school. Uh, uh, any uh, school uh, teacher or, or school counselor that asks us to, to help them uh, do some of these programs, implement them in their schools, we would love to do it because it's, it's, it'll benefit our families. Right. So. And I know as a bilingual facilitator that you have assignments, different assignments, mm -hmm. uh, maybe multiple schools. Some of you have multiple schools and so you have to do the outreach for all the schools mm -hmm. and also yes. the programs that you just mentioned, but also the importance of connecting with each family, which is the most, yes. I think is the most beautiful part of being a bilingual facilitator, connecting with the families one-on-one -on -one and it getting is. to know them And, a and bit more. connecting them with the community as well. And, exactly. and the resources in the community. Just this past weekend, I had the opportunity to um, assist a family that had just gotten to, to the U.S. and, and they had uh, a very challenging situation. So I, I connected them with a, an organization in the community that provided, the, provided them with um, gear for their, their children, like a, a stroller for the twins. And it, it was amazing to be able to do that, that, that my job gives me an opportunity to help people in so many ways. It's right. amazing. That's great. And not only that, but that you have the opportunity to get to know other providers, yes, so you can we, link mm -hmm. services and, and, and learn to, uh, you know, you have a big heart. I know all of you mm -hmm. have a big heart, and it's just hard to help everybody. So just by providing families mm -hmm. with contact information and delegating the function of the yes. professionals to assist families, that is the beauty of it. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate thank you. Thank you for having me. I look forward me. to seeing Pleasure. you again soon. Me too. Thank you. <laughs>
One learning block that is devoted to movement and healthy minds and bodies supports a cooperative classroom and a feeling of connectedness. In Move, 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 Healthy Minds and Bodies, activities support oral language development and prepare the brain for new information. The use of repetition and movement offers an opportunity to review content across various learning blocks. The positive effects of physical activity on the young brain provides a focus and a readiness to learn. Ready? Ask your child how Move, Move, Move helped them learn today. Boom! Run! Run! Excellent, boys and girls.